Welcome back. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm swallowing. <laughs> now it's time for a very special entry journal so celebrating the life of a, a very special magician right. that we recently just lost. Sean Paul? Good morning, guys. I know we were going to do part three of time travel this week, but that's going to have to wait because something big happened this last week. Roy Horn, one of the biggest magic entertainers of the last century, of Siegfried and Roy, he contracted COVID-19 and died this last week. So what I did is I reached out to a friend of mine who grew up knowing both Siegfried and Roy, has a lot of great stories and anecdotes. Taylor Reed of Branson, Missouri, remembering Roy of Siegfried and Roy. So my mom and dad saw Siegfried and Roy at the Hallelujah Las Vegas at the MGM and they came back home and they said, you're not going to believe these guys. Siegfried and Roy are the greatest magicians we've ever seen. You've got to come see them. So they took me to Vegas a few years later and it was at the Stardust Hotel for adults only. So my dad had the brilliant idea of buying me a mustache with some little glue and putting it on with a suit. And he paid to get me in and it worked. So I got to see the whole show. It was amazing. It blew my mind. And then the following year, I wanted to meet them so bad that my mom and dad, well, my dad's a crazy guy that called Lynette Chappelle every day and said, please let me have my boy meet Siegfried Roy for a photo op. So I go back to the Stardust. I get to go backstage and hang out with Siegfried Roy in their backstage home. It was awesome at the Stardust Hotel. Siegfried Roy had this beautiful room back there. They taught me all about magic. They said, well, we got you here, Mr. Taylor. You, we're going to get you in the show tonight. It's, a, it's an adult-only show. And uh, we're going to slip you in during our bit, which is 30 minutes long. And we're going to slip you back out when it's over with. And they had no idea that we had already seen the whole show with a mustache the year before. So that was pretty cool. I came up with a great idea many years later because I got to hang out with them at the Mirage. And I said, you know, y'all need to do something that will make y'all magically appear. Because they used to always walk out with the birds. Very simple. And I said, how about a major illusion to make y'all appear? So I had a sketch uh, with these big plexiglass cylinders that would come down from the ceiling, uh, fill up with smoke, and then go back up in the air, and they'd be standing there. And they ended up using that in the show. It was just it was they, awesome. they took your idea. They took my. Now they did change well, some of the, the were method. You when you I must it have your been 21. 21 yeah. years old. Yeah, yeah, maybe older. 21, 22. And what would they have said when they gave you when you gave them this idea? They thought it was awesome. Yeah, Roy's always laughing. <laughs> Taylor. So, you know, at the frontier, I had this wonderful idea where Siegfried would be on a black horse, Roy would be on a white horse, and they would morph together and become a zebra. And it was pretty cool. It was, I designed this for their show, The Mirage, and Roy thought this was very, very awesome. But he says, Taylor, you know, the, uh, the horses are more unpredictable than even my cats. So I, I don't know a lot about animals, but I guess the horses can be pretty unpredictable. Siegfried and Roy uh, were performing in Vegas for many years, and after all the years of them performing there, I eventually moved there, and I started building my own illusions, and I was trying to emulate them in the, in the sense that I wanted to go large. And I've got many, many large illusions here. I've uh, been performing in Branson now for 16 years, and we're currently performing at the Dutton's Theater. And uh, so... Uh, Anyway, it's a, it's a great place to be. And, uh, and anyway, look around at all these crazy illusions. I'll tell you what. All inspired from Secret and Roy. At this point, it's tough to think about Roy Horn without thinking about the abrupt and tragic end of his career. October 3rd, 2003 when there was an accident with one of his beloved tigers. 2003, I took my wife uh, out to Las Vegas for a great vacation, and that's when Siegfried and Roy had the accident. That's when the tiger attacked Roy. And a lot of our friends around Las Vegas were telling us Roy got attacked by the tiger. We heard it about five times, and we thought they were joking. And we, we, went, to the, uh, we went to Lance Burton, actually, over the Monte Carlo, and they go, yeah, the, they said Lance is already headed to the hospital. So we went to the hospital and um, I talked to Lynette Chappelle. She was just, everybody was just broken up. I saw Siegfried in the hallways behind the glass. Everybody was crying and Lynette said it was, it was just another show, but it's just like, just something happened. You know, to, to them, it was just like, they do it every day, all day long, sometimes a couple of shows a night, but this just happened to be very unfortunate. And, and yeah, and that was their last show uh, at the Mirage. And it, Their show at the Mirage was the greatest show in the history of magic. I mean, even to this day, 
It literally, it was way predated Circus LA. I mean, the stuff that they're trying to do now, Siegfried Roy was just on top of the world. So one of the things that I m remember most about Roy, believe it or all not, is the keychains rattling. Because every time, no matter what age I met them over the years, there's always a wad of keys that were rattling as he were walking. So, I mean, he just, uh, he must have had many cages, you know, all those animals and he was in this door, out that door. He's a very busy guy. Siegfried would sit and talk to you for days about magic and illusions. Roy was always on the run. This guy had, you know. He didn't have guys taking care of the cats for him? I'm sure he had many guys working for him. Yes, I know he did. But he was hands-on, this guy, definitely. So very personally involved. Very personally involved, this guy. Roy was very personally involved. And I know one thing about Roy, he actually loved animals more than people. I know that for sure. <laughs> So do I. I was going to say, you could relate to that. I love animals more than people. Yeah. They don't back talk and they don't, they don't leave me mean comments on social media. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, they don't. But they might bite you once in a while or hiss yeah. at you. Oh, off air, I'll tell you. I don't want to talk about my cat too much today. But my cat, Dolly, I have scars on my torso. Jeremy, I told you yesterday, a hissing cat, should, you should be afraid of. Did you, did you hear me say that? I did hear you say that. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to hear this story. It was my fault, but anyway, I digress. But it's sad for him. And it is. It's sad for Siegfried, you know, mm. such an iconic show. And Well, things changed for them after the tiger attack. I mean, yeah. obviously they were, they were at the Mirage for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, they, weren't, they weren't working. And he had to come back, you know, he had, uh, he was pretty not well after yeah. that attack. Um, do you, uh, you know, I actually lost track of him after that. Yeah. Do you know if he, he came back at all to perform again, I, or I was he always they, recuperating? I don't believe they ever, I, I don't believe they ever did. Not, not at all to the capacity that they did before. That they were. If they even did a performance. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's so sad. It's yeah. heartbreaking. I'm thrilled that I got to see them, like we talked about yesterday. Um, uh, what a duo, really, they were. Man, I just, I would... I love magic, but when I'm going to Vegas, I don't think I'd, that would have been on my top of the list. Well, but now I wish I would have. Yeah, well, I, um, it actually was paid for, um, and I got to go. Some other folks bought it for us, and so that was great to see, because I don't know if I would have either. Right, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love the Beatles show out there. I've seen that a couple mm -hmm. times, the love show, uh, but, you know, music and all that. But, but it is a, a great loss, and... Um, so many people have looked up to him for years, yeah. all of our magician friends. Just saying, you know, uh, the magician community is actually mm -hmm. very small, and they all kind of know they each other or know of each other. They do. And that's where I learned when I was in L.A. with Sean Paul and Julianne. It's yes. like, it's a tight-knit community. They support yes. each other. They yeah. help each other. You know, you think about maybe being competitive, like, I want to do this. And yeah. They really do support each other. Yeah, it's the same way uh, with the impersonator uh, people. And that's what I always found is that, first of all, I can't do all the jobs as Shania or Cher or whatever. So, yeah, we all worked together and helped each other. Mm -hmm. And that helped all of us because if I couldn't do a job, I would give it to someone else. And guess what? The next time they needed something, they would call me. And I'm so glad that Kelly's called me several times to fill in as Cher. And I've done it. I was like, Actually, you oh, do a better Sunny. Kelly, you do a better I'll do it. <laughs> Uh, put me in. Yeah. Put me in, Coach. Ho. Oh. You do a really good, uh, Sonny, actually. I was very impressed. Honestly, you picked that up just like that. Sonny, I could do. Cher never tried. <laughs> I just do Jack McFarland doing Cher. That's exactly yeah. right. Good job, Jeremy. All right, we'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Don't go away. Ho. Oh. <laughs> How old is Cher now?